It's Friday, and it's a football Friday. Welcome aboard. Here we are. Playoff Friday. No college football games. No shitty NBA games to worry about. These are some of the best weeks of football the entire year. The wild card, divisional, and conference championship. How many times do we see the Super Bowl turn out to be a dud? Eric's right, man. Finally Friday. Happy Friday, gents. We're finally here. It's playoff Friday. It's not just football Friday. It's playoff Friday. We're going to have some fun here, man. Absolutely. Hour two, Tony Bruno will join us. We'll get his spin. Why are the Eagle fans the most dominant fans in Philadelphia over Flyers, Sixer, and Philly fans? What separates them? What's the big separation? Tony's been covering you guys for 50 years. We're going to talk to him in hour number two. First hour's wide open. It's you and us. We're just going to sit here, and you and me are just going to go back and forth here. By the way, please, guys, hit the like button like you have. It's been a spectacular week this year. This week has been absolutely spectacular. You guys have been great. The shows have gone through the roof. You're killing it. And I appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. We're going to get to you guys here in a minute. Eric, I can't wait. People that are brand new to the show, if you don't know what to do, just sit back and watch some of these guys on Big Sales Army. They'll take care of you, show you how to operate it. By the way, nobody's panties or nobody gets butt hurt here. It's all in good fun. We're talking about football. We're talking about sports. We leave the politics and all that other shit for all those other idiots out there. We don't really care. We are 70,000 people in a stadium worrying about one thing, winning on Sunday. I'll tell you something. I love our channel. I saw a really great debate today. And Barrett Brooks, of course, was the guy to bring it up. It was Donovan McNabb versus Jalen Hurts. And at first, you go like this, because you, you know the book on Donovan. His book has been written. The final chapter of his career has been pretty much etched. You know what it is. You know who he is. So when you look at it, you look at all of those chapters and go, well, Donovan's a better quarterback. And you look at Jalen, you go, well, we have to put everything in perspective here. I'm just going to look at year two. I'm looking at Jalen's first year as a starting quarterback in the NFL versus Donovan McNabb's first year as a starting quarterback in the NFL. I believe it was 2000 that McNabb had his true first start of a 16-game schedule. Let me ask you something about that 2000 Philadelphia Eagle team. How good was that Philadelphia Eagle team that went, let me get the stats right, 11 and 5? How good was that Eagle team in 2000? My recollection from 30,000 feet was that they were a pretty good football team. Okay? That was a pretty good football team, right? Talent on both sides of the ball, constantly battling to go to the conference championship game. Them and the Buccaneers were kind of playing ping pong back and forth. Detroit was kind of in the conversation a little bit. Washington a little too. Okay? That was a good team, right? Jalen's first year, obviously, was this year, 2021, and he was 8-7-0. McNabb was 11-5. This is his first year starting. He threw the ball 569 times. Completed 330. That's a lot for a first year true starter. 3365. Now remember, 2000, the game's a little different. Wide receivers are not going to have big mouths and the rules going across the middle. Okay? 
It's not like it is today. So it was a tougher league then. You, you had to do tougher things to move the sticks back in that time. Is that fair? 3365 is not bad in passing yards. 21 touchdown passes. For that time, it's not bad. First year starting. Ah, good point. Dante says, and Andy Reid. Got to add that into the, into the configuration of this argument here. 13 picks. Here's something that shocked me. 58% completion percentage. Under 60%, Donovan in his first year. Now he did throw the ball 569 times. It's a lot for a first-year starter. But 58%, not a high number. A lot of drops, overthrows. You want to be around 63, okay, where you're getting production. 86 carries for 629 yards. That's a pretty good first year. 330 completions, 3365 in passing yards, 21 touchdown passes, 629 yards. Oh, and six TDs rushing too. That's a pretty damn good year. Now let's compare it to Jalen here. Eight and seven. 265 completions. Now, to be fair, it's almost 130 less attempts. Okay? It's almost percentage-wise in the same conversation. 3144 in passing yards versus 3365. You're in the room. 16 touchdown passes versus nine picks. I'd like to have that number in the 20s. How about this? Jalen Hurts had a higher completion percentage in his first year starting than what McNabb did. Now, granted, throwing the ball more. 58% to 61.3% completion percentage, as I told you. Okay? You'd like to have that number around 63. Here's the great equalizer, though. 139 in carries for 784 yards and 10 touchdowns. So if you think about it, in the first year for Donovan McNabb, six rushing touchdowns, 21 passing touchdowns for 27 total touchdowns. That's pretty good for first year. 10 rushing touchdowns and 16 passing touchdowns, 26 touchdowns in his first year. One less. Will he have a better career than Donovan McNabb? Paul, I'll get to that. I'll get to Lane. I'm making a point here. Will he be a better quarterback than Donovan McNabb, Jalen Hurts? This week could tell us a lot, no? How about this? Will this weekend on Sunday, will it tell us a little bit more about his medal compared to Donovan? What was the biggest criticism of Donovan McNabb? He shit the bed in big moments, right? Is that the tag that's on his career? Is that he shit the bed? Eric says too early to tell. Eric, I know. This is kind of what I do, Eric. I project, you know, I cover an athlete, just like with Howie. Howie's projecting on numerous guys on his roster. At the end of this year, you're projecting on whether or not you think Devontae Smith is going to be a 1,300-yard receiver and a 100-catch guy. You're projecting that. That's what I'm doing here. I'm projecting here. Paul says four championship turds. Chris says five title games, one Super Bowl loss. Yes, McNabb underachieved. He was a first-rounder, correct, if I'm not mistaken. Donovan was a first-round draft choice out of Keese, right? I may be wrong on that. Okay. 
I look at Jalen Hurts here. Why do we look at these numbers with Jalen and go like this? Boy, I'll tell you something. It's closer than I thought. It's, isn't it? It's closer than I thought. I thought Donovan McNabb was a 10-time better quarterback at the beginning of his career versus Jalen Hurts. I really did. I, I, I thought it wasn't going to be close. Now, the coaching staff on that 2000 team, Jim Johnson, Andy Reid, there were a boatload of great coaches on that coaching staff. And the league, you didn't have the movement that you have today, right? Free agency wasn't that truly big of a deal yet. Where I'm going is that teams pretty much stayed intact. Big salaries would have a guy leave here or there, but you don't see the exoduses that you see that we have today, right? You don't see those exoduses. Now, listen, guys, hit the like button. You know what I do? I go back and forth, okay? And we, we sit around and we debate these type of topics. Chalk it up, Sports Philly. First round, second pick. McNabb was inaccurate as a rookie. Backyard birds. McNabb had better receivers and a stacked coaching staff. Matt P., Andy was smart and got a veteran D.C. unlike the Eagles with Gannon. Well, that's going to be put to the test on Sunday versus Brady for sure. Donovan got booed draft day and never got over it, even today. I think that sensitivity is what really hurt him in championship moments. Whereas I don't think, how about this? I'll give you one intangible that I think Jalen Hurts has over Donovan McNabb right now. You know what that is? I think he's mentally tougher. Is that fair to say? You guys can criticize me all you want here. I say Jalen Hurts has been schooled because of what happened at Alabama. What people said about him, how he had to deal with that Wentz nightmare last year, how he had to deal with the two and five start and people saying he couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. Big Chris says 04 was a killer. Is that the loss to the Bucks? Brandon, thanks for coming aboard. Backyard birds, yes. He's definitely mentally tougher. McNabb soft in the head like Wentz. I think both of them, Eric, I think Donovan McNabb is weak. And I think Carson Wentz is weak. Actar says a lot of McNabb teammates didn't like him either. That's not the case. You heard Jay Glazer making that comment, okay, saying that everyone in that locker room loves him because that's what Lane told him. T.O. is a winner. McNabb is a choker, Paul says. Drew says 04 was Super Bowl year. Okay. 02 was season was the one that they lost to the Bucs. The Bucs went on in 02 to go on and win the Super Bowl. Okay. Chris, 04 lost to the Patriots. Got it. Chris Ward, facts. Timothy, I agree. T.O. is an eagle. Great. It's got to be his best stop. I think San Francisco was a really great start for him. Ian says, how do you think the weather will affect the game, positive or negative for the birds? Hey, you know, I hear people saying that it's going to favor the Buccaneers. I'm like this. I don't know. If it's wet out, I think running the ball always is the advantage. Why would I want to throw the ball in the air? Tip passes, slippery footballs, especially if it's a torrential downpour, which is normally known this time of year in Tampa. I lived there for 20 years, played there for three, so I kind of get the whole deal. I know what it's like there, man. And they're torrential downpours. Don says, McNabb deserves more respect. I think, hey, maybe it's me. Maybe you guys think I'm wrong here. But, but I think McNabb is revered as one of the greatest quarterbacks in Eagle history. No? Booza says McNabb had a very good defense, and he still could not win the Super Bowl. 
threw four picks in the game. Somebody pull up T.O.'s 04 season and the playoff stats. Didn't T.O. miss the last couple games because of a leg injury, right? Chris Ward says bullshit. Thank you. One of my favorite words. Eric says yes, and Big Chris says I rocked with Don even though he came up short. Matt P says McNabb isn't loved, Jaws is still beloved, and Vic is more popular. I think it's I think it's McNabb's attitude. It's a little Carson Wenish. I think he's his own worst enemy at times. McNabb should be working in the media, but because of his antics and at times judgment issues, it's kept him out of that room. Noodles, thanks for coming aboard. Okay? These stats are pretty close, though. Booza says he's a crybaby. Aren't most quarterbacks, though? Don't they whine? <laughs> the defensive guy's a guy talking about quarterbacks whining. I mean, hey, I do think they whine. He missed both playoff games and played in the Super Bowl with a rod in his leg. It was a great effort, man. It was Jack Young bloodish. Okay? It was. It was Jack Young blood stuff. I haven't seen man in the arena yet, monkey mind bananas. I haven't seen that. Syracuse McNabb was great. He destroyed the Miami Hurricanes. McNabb cries too much about his own career not being and not meaning as much to us. Hey, man, you know what? You're not – hey, I know this. Just being around you guys, this is the one thing Philadelphia sports fan is never going to do to an athlete. And I'm going to be as simple as possible. You ready? Hey, Philly fans, how do you think my career was? Even if you're great, you know what they're going to do? You didn't win the big one. I was talking to Xander prior to going on the air here. Yeah, you know what he says? Hey, man, I don't care how great he thought he was. Did he ever hoist the Vince Lombardi trophy? That's a no. Did he ever put the George Hallis trophy in the year? Yeah, once. Great. So we won second place. Congratulations. I'll pick up my participation medal over there, down there in South Philly. And you know where it is? It's in the trash can. Oh, yeah, it's in that trash can over there. That's where second place dudes finish. You're not going to do that in a city like that. Woe is me. It's not going to work. It works in snowflake cities like San Francisco. Some of them other bullshit places. Okay? Oh, well, he gave the good old college try. What? Bro, seriously. You know, hey, Olympic Games, I'm all right. If I tell my daughter this all the time. If you get to the podium, because that shit's traditionally politics, that's a good thing. But when you're in a scoreboard game, and it's win or loser, and you're keeping score, and there's no politics, bro. Ain't no participation medals in that shit. If there's a judge, I'm all right with one, two, three. If it's a scoreboard and that's the only judge, there ain't no participation medals in that stuff. Okay? Participation medals. Yeah, okay, guy. Congratulations. Your highest finish was second. See? And watch this. I like his career, McNabbs. But it even rubs me the wrong way when you're asking me to give gratuitous back slaps to you. Hey, great job for coming in second. Dropping that conference championship game to the Bucks. You know the Buccaneers? I covered that team, the 0-2 team that you guys got beat by the Bucks. Do you know the Buccaneers when they went up? I remember covering. I was talking to those dudes. And I was talking to Simeon Rice. You know what they were saying? We got to get over the Eagles, man. We got to get over the hump. Because remember, it was St. Louis at the time. It was Philly. It was the Bucks. All in the NFC, you know, it was like that kind of little triangle. Detroit was kind of decent, too. 
I think they got to a conference championship game against Washington. The Mark Rippon year. I forget what that year was. But they went up, and when they won that conference title game against the Eagles, and then the Bucs went on to beat the Raiders in the Super Bowl, their big game that year was against Philly. That was, okay, came back, I remember, man. Everybody at the airport, you know what they were saying? Oh, my God. That's crazy. That's crazy great. That was 92. Will, thanks, man. A little off the mark there with the ripping. I could have swore that it was a conference championship game that Detroit got to under the Wayne Fonts year. I forget what year that was that they got to a conference championship. W2 says that was a team letdown. McNabb was on that team. Joe Jerevicious was great. Joe Jerevicious. Why do I think Penn State? Am I right when I say that? Joe Jerevicious, Penn State. Does that sound right? W2 says can't blame McNabb for a team letdown. Wait a minute. W2. Remember something, though. The quarterback does get the blame. Goes with the position. He gets the acclaim, and he gets the fame. But he also gets the heat. Big heat. Matt P says the Eagles went to four straight NFC Conference championship games. Lost three of them. McNabb and Reed choked in big games. Mahomes saved Reed's career. Matt, wouldn't you think this, though? Wouldn't you think that Andy Reed maybe learned from those Losses in Philadelphia, and was it going to do the same mistakes that possibly he made in Philly? And he's pushed it on to Mc, and to Patrick Mahomes now. You know, you can learn from mistakes. Reed looks like a better coach today than he did in Philadelphia. He looks like a better coach. Okay, he's constantly schooling this kid, Patrick Mahomes. Whereas I wonder if Donovan really ever bought in to all of the things that Andy Reid was teaching him. Didn't there always seem to be kind of like a little conflict between those two? I don't get that sense with Patrick and Andy Reid. I think there's more of a dialogue. Now, maybe that's Reid growing as a coach too. Am I right when I say that? I mean there just seemed to be a little more of a disconnect between the head coach, Andy Reid, and Donovan. Like a trust issue. Looks to me like maybe Reid has grown more from that relationship. And by the way, for the record, anytime I hear, anytime I hear Andy talking about McNabb, he talks with great reverence about the guy. I never hear him talking shit on Donovan McNabb. I never hear that. He'll throw more shade on T.O. than he will McNabb. But now he's a better coach. His communication skills, I mean, Andy goes and sits over next to Patrick Mahomes after a series, good or bad, and they sit and talk about what they just saw. Andy comes up with more play. I never really saw all of that much with McNabb and Reed. Am I right when I say that? Again, an observation from 30,000 feet for me, yeah, but but Eric, you can't have that. You see, Eric says this. That's not Reed's style. Well, let me show you something, Eric, on a coach that changed. And he was an old school guy. You ready? So Don Shula had Bob Greasy. They won those three conference title games and two Super Bowls, and one of them was undefeated. They ran it with running the ball. They threw the ball like 12, 13 times. He gets Marino. He changes his entire philosophy and airs it out, changes the NFL. Pull a lot of the things that Air Coriel was doing in San Diego at the time and put him in the Miami Dolphin offense with a West Coast style. It was more spread out. He changed because he had to adapt to the talent around him and the type of player around him. Big Chris says Reeves couldn't stop the circus and keep players in line. You know what, though, Chris? 
That's who you draft. You've got to have some character, man, to be on my football team. True about Shula. Yeah, it's, Shula changed his entire makeup because of the people around him. Reed, I think, has changed his approach. How about this? If, if Donovan McNabb had Kansas City Andy Reed, let me ask you something here. We'll get into Sunday's game, I promise. If Donovan McNabb had Kansas City Andy Reid, would Donovan McNabb have won one of those Super Bowls? What do you think? The guy you see in Kansas City, the guy you see coaching today, by the way, that Kansas City team, I think it's just as talented as that 2000 Eagle team. Plus, look at the coaching staff. Look at the coaching staff the Eagles had in 2000. Okay? Eric Bieniemy versus Andy Reid. I don't know. Jim Johnson as your D coordinator? I don't know. I'm pretty good with that. Charles says we should have won all three cells. Actar, he's a Hall of Fame guy. He's going to Canton. Brooks and Johnson cost us wins. How come nobody talks about that? Oh, Cole, Andy Reid's son died in training camp. I remember that story. And by the way, a lot of assholes in the media were painting that story very ugly. I felt for Coach. I text him. Rip Jim Johnson. Boozum, one of the finest defensive coordinators of all time. Absolutely, man. Bud Carson, him. God, man, he is in that line of some of the greatest coordinators of all time. I'll tell you what, Buddy Ryan, too. Tremendous coordinator. Andy Reid changed with the loss of his son. Okay? Nick, different guy you're seeing in Kansas City right now, right? More compassionate? More of a coach? Bob says, I think Westbrook and Trotter injuries really hurt us. Noodle. He was the GOAT. God, he was great. What a, Him and Marty Kiffin really ran the NFL at that time as a defensive coordinating head coach. But he was incredibly tough. Man, that, that Bears defense was the only way. And you know why nobody's ever duplicated the Bear defense? Because you have to have exceptional ends. You have to have a Richard Dent. You have to have a Mike Singletary in the middle. You have to have a Dave Durson. You have to have guys like that on your team to run defense. Wilbur Marshall, them dudes. Ron Rivera. Otis Wilson, those dudes. A great group. The reason the, you haven't seen that style of defense because you got to have that collection of people. And in today's NFL, you can't afford it. I keep telling Seth to apply for the job. A lot of commitment to be a coach in the NFL today. KC Reed and number five would have had a dynasty. So the Kansas, okay, guys, I'm working on him, Timothy. Hey, it took me five years to get Jay Glazer. It took me 10 years to get David Hill. I got him. I always get my man. We got the rock coming too. Got to be patient. You Philly guys, man. <laughs> Patience is not a virtue. It's a good thing though too. Okay? <laughs> it's a good thing. Dick LeBeau, man. Phillyopolis. I was thinking I couldn't bring the name back, man. Okay? I couldn't bring the name back. He's a freaking great coordinator. He's a great coordinator. I would love to hear from McNabb, too. But again, he's very prickly with the media. I don't blame him. I, I, you know, when a guy's not very friendly with the media, a lot of people talk shit on Donovan. You know, he holds grudges. Can you imagine if A-Rod held grudges? You know the reason A-Rod is working at baseball at ESPN and doing that other stuff? It's because he's not holding grudges and how they treated him. 
Okay? That, that's why he's got a big gig. Dom Capers, another guy, man. Fantastic coach. Fantastic. Yeah, he was on ESPN, Samuel, then something happened. How does everyone feel about Marino? Underachiever. Get this, guys. I used to say this down with the Miami media. You ready for this? Whose resume would you rather have, Bob Greasy's or Dan Marino's? Real quick, whose resume would you rather have? Whose resume would you rather have, Dan Marino's or Bob Greasy's? I used to get killed for this in South Florida. Matt says Greasy. Well, Greasy's got three AFC championship rings, two Super Bowl rings. He was the quarterback of an undefeated football team. And he went to the Hall of Fame, and he's got a gold jacket like Marino. Okay? And now that all of Marino's records have been broken, whose resume looks bigger? Yeah, but Bob only threw the ball 15 to 20 times. I'm talking about resumes. It's not just about stats. It's not about stats. It's about winning in the postseason. How about this? When you look at guys like Julian Edelman, people go, he's not a Hall of Famer. That's a Hall of Fame postseason career, though, isn't it? You, he, he's a conflict. Because during a regular year, you're looking at a guy, I don't even know if he's got 900 catches. But you look at Edelman and you go like this, this guy's a Super Bowl MVP. Lynn Swan won that. Right? All right. Eagles and Bucks, can it get done? Boy, I'll tell you something, man. You guys drove the point home. You guys were right. And I couldn't have been more wrong. I'll tell you what that is. Guys, hit the like button. Please bang on that, baby. And you keep it right here on the National Football Show. This is Joe Krause of Krause's Coats inviting you to donate a slightly worn coat or jacket and help veterans stay warm this winter. Go to Krause's Coats on Facebook to help those who've served. Have a happy holiday. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass. Free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. So good, it just disappears. The city of Philadelphia sparkles during the Christmas holiday season with an array of colorful light displays and illuminated Christmas trees donated or installed for free by the talented electricians of IBEW Local 98. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities at IBEW Local 98, visit us at www.ibew98.org. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. As a hardworking American, you've never experienced how tough life can be until now. A catastrophic injury while working on the job. A personal injury from someone else's negligence. Turned away by other law firms in the region who didn't bother to learn your story. It's time to meet the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm 
and managing partner Brian Fritz. Badly injured? Call the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm. Find out why they say, we got this. Go for the midnight tears. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. National Football Show, Dan Silas. Hour two, Tony Bruno will join us. Right now, it's just wide open for you and me. We'll get to all you guys' thoughts here in a second. I love what Ben Roethlisberger's doing as he gets ready for this Kansas City game. We can't win. We have no chance of winning. They're so much better. I don't know how we're going to put points up. We're playing with house money. Hey, what the hell? Uh, I don't know. We'll never win. I, I, I think I told you guys the story. Um, Lou Holtz used to do this to us all the time. He, he, hey, 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 Boozer, thank you, brother. He used to do this all the time. I, I just don't know how this. I didn't know how this Miami team did so fast. I just, I come to tell you, I, you know, they're just the best. I got the big size guys. They're big. They're fast. They're quick. I, I, I just... We're all looking around going like this. Lou, you're fucking 11 and 0. <laughs> what do you mean there's no chance you're going to beat us? Don't play us like that. And that's what Ben's doing. But Kansas City, it's at home. It's at Arrowhead, you know. Get this guy. You know, I, I, I just don't know how we're going to beat those Miami teams. I, 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 I sound like Elmer Fudd. I'll be like, good guy. This silly old brown. I just said, I'm sorry, Lou, I missed that. Did you say something about South Carolina? I don't know how we're going to beat him. Jimmy would go like this. The fuck is this guy doing, man? He's 7-0. and <laughs> Oh, man. I'm pulling for Ben, but of all the games this weekend, watch that be the one that's the upset. Oh, by the way, every home team, this weekend is favored. Okay? Charles says, Sills, you're the dad I wish I had. You're not crying on anyone's shoulder here, are you? <laughs> hey. I, hey. Hey, Charles, I, I wish my daughter would say, my dad, man, is the biggest blowhard there is. Hey, just so you know, Charles, one day I was at the beach with my daughter. She started giving me a bunch of shit about something. I looked over at her and I go, I'm going to bury you with these fucking crabs here and no one will ever find you. She looks over at the person that's next to me. And she goes, don't believe anything he says. This guy can't even jump over a twig. She looks over. I have no respect in my house. I have no respect. She goes, he can't jump over a twig. I've already, yeah, she's raced me in a 40 and she got me. She thinks I pulled the hamstring. She's like, Excuses, fat dad. <laughs> Alexander, thank you. Some reason we connect to you, Sills. Booza, thank you, man. I, I, hey, <laughs> hey, wait a minute. One inch vertical? Ken, that's generous. I couldn't jump over a quarter right now. Thank you, right? Charles is really Charles Manson. Yeah, but maniac. I thought Charles Manson's doing a dirt nap right now. Am I wrong? I thought that dude's finally doing a dirt nap. Right? <laughs> All right, guys. I have to come clean. I have to come clean. Damn, I hate doing this. I'm not going to say it too loud. You guys were right. And Sanders, shut your hole. You guys are right about Carson Wentz. Eagle, thank you. You guys are right. You're right about Wentz. Can I tell you why? Okay. So when the head coach is asked the question, 
about 2022 and Wentz. And Frank Reich, who fought for you, can't commit. Watch. Check one. When the owner comes out, Jim Irsay, three days ago, and says, all this stops with me. That's a pissed off organization because the Colts know they have a playoff roster. They are really pissed off. They're not in the postseason. Owner, check. Then today you had Chris Ballard come out and go like this. I'm not committing to anything. And Chris is not really an emotional kind of guy. And he was pissed off. I'm not committing to one guy. I'm not com- Dude, when you got a franchise quarterback, you go immediately. That's my guy. He's my guy. You think they're doing that in Cincinnati? You think they're doing that? How about this? I'll give you a team that didn't make the playoffs. You think they're doing that in Los Angeles with Justin Herbert? Well, you know, we'll have an open competition next year for Justin. And, dude, Brandon Staley goes, that's my guy. I'm disappointed we're not in for him. Right? W2 says, thanks for the first rounder. Oh, my God, the Eagles, you guys have completely won the divorce. And get this, you got the kids, too. The Eagles won the divorce, got the kids, which means you get the alimony. You get a nice paycheck every month. You probably got the house. You won the whole thing. You probably even got the frequent flyer miles. <laughs> I'll take his frequent flyer miles. And by the way, since I'm being greedy, I'll take the Rolex. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, and and on the way out, I got a $100 million bill for you, too, to take care of. Will you take care of that for me, too? Congratulations. So you got rid of the debt. You got rid of the dead wood. You won the house. You won the kids. You got the alimony. You got the house. I don't know what else there is to say, man. Philiopolis, you got the damn house, too. Shit. Only thing this dude's leaving with is his clothes he's got on his back. They took the fucking Rolex, too. Hey, I'll take the pinky ring. Hey, and if you don't get your ass out of here, I'll take something else like the shoes you're wearing, man. Hey, you know those crocodile shoes? I'll take them, too. <laughs> Kyle says, I want the dogs, too. Actar, thank you, man. So a big reason we connect with you is, damn, hey, hey, put that up there again for me, brother. Connect with you. You feel your love for Jerome. Oh, thank you, brother. God, I, I think of him every month, every week. I love him. Dude, you're doinking the wife, too? You took his old lady. Damn. Feast with Pete. Got to make better picks in the draft. That's a given. But they've done a nice job, dude. How about Kelsey getting first team all pro? Lane Johnson getting second. Hey, so wait a minute. Lane Johnson, second team all pro, but he didn't make the Pro Bowl. Okay, the all pro team is the tougher team to make. So you're a second team all pro, but you're not in the Pro Bowl. He'll he'll get there. Uh, yeah, Lane Johnson. I mean, but he's second team all pro. Fourth all pro for Kelsey. Wow. Best center the Eagles have ever had. You have bet absolutely. That's saying something too. That's saying something. Nunez says the Bucks only best three playoff teams this year. Not a lot in the postseason. I think some of these teams are going to be um, surprised this weekend. The Colts should have taken 
and should have gotten the picture. Dude, Carson Wentz, man, you have the owner, the general manager, and the head coach not supporting you. That's not a good, that's not a good place to be right now. Okay? All right. <laughs> God damn it, Dan. Fart into the microphone because we know you just drowned downed a 14 Philly cheesesteak with triple cheese and mushrooms. Could I do a uh, Philly cheesesteak like that? Oh, I could probably engulf that thing. Oh, I could probably kill that. Dude, they're going to – hey, Carson Wentz in Houston could be a reality. Could be a reality. They're going to try to move him some – Hey, I'll tell you something, too. If I'm the Colts, I go after Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo's 33-14-0 as a quarterback in the NFL with an NFC championship. And if San Francisco's stupid enough to get rid of him, I'll take him. Guys, want, The guy's 33-14 and 14 as a starter. I get the injury, but he's not going to be the guy that's going to be driving the freight train. Okay? The freight train is, is driven by Jonathan Taylor. That's the kind of team that Garoppolo has to go to. If you're asking Jimmy G to stand back there and throw the ball 45 times, he's going to get killed. Vesely says, wouldn't you go after Watson? I don't want to give up three first-rounders for the guy, though. I don't have to give up three first-rounders for Garoppolo. I think the 49ers would be willing to give up one. Now, the price goes up if he gets to a Super Bowl or he gets to a conference championship game. I think the 49ers are going to work over the Cowboys. We're going to talk more about that. Hey, what? Eagles win if this happens. The Bucks win if this happens. I'll hit on this next. Do me a favor. Please hit the like button. Keep it right here on the National Football Show. This is Joe Krause of Krause's Coats inviting you to donate a slightly worn coat or jacket and help veterans stay warm this winter. Go to Krause's Coats on Facebook to help those who've served. Have a happy holiday. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. So good, it just disappears. The city of Philadelphia sparkles during the Christmas holiday season with an array of colorful light displays and illuminated Christmas trees donated or installed for free by the talented electricians of IBEW Local 98. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities at IBEW Local 98, visit us at www.ibew98.org. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. As a hardworking American, you've never experienced how tough life can be until now. A catastrophic injury while working on the job. A personal injury from someone else's negligence. Turned away by other law firms in the region who didn't bother to learn your story. It's time to meet the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm and managing partner Brian Fritz. Badly injured? 
Call the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm. Find out why they say, we got this. Go for the midnight tears. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Welcome back, National Football Show, you boy. Tough room today, man. <laughs> I saw a guy, Marty. Mike McCarthy looks like Artie Lang. <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny, dude. I don't know. Mike McCarthy does look like, I don't know, man. Like he just rolled out of bed, you know, scratched his nuts. Hey, is there a game today? You know, he's not very good at keeping, you know, watch on the clock. Oh, is it that one or over there? That one. Wh which one's right? <laughs> yeah. Don't you usually have a guy in your ear up in the box going, Coach, there's a minute 30 left. Coach, we got a minute 30 left and there's two timeouts. Don't forget. Coach, 90 seconds left in the ball game. Two timeouts. Might want to call one here. Hey, hang on. 30 seconds. You usually have a guy in your ear like that, and that's how you're managing your timeouts. Oh, man. Fredo Wentz ousted in two cities. Oh, man. Dude, get this. So, I mean, behind the scenes, I wonder, and, and Frank even has to do this. I don't know, bro. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Hey, don't forget, hour two, Tony Bruno's joining us. All right, guys. Big game Sunday, obviously. Here we go. Eagles win. If this happens, you tell me first. The Philadelphia Eagles will have success versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If this happens, what is this? What would be the most critical thing that the Eagles have to accomplish on Sunday versus the defending world champions at home? who are eight-and-a-half-point favorites as of today. If they win the turnover battle. If Hurts goes off. Pressure on Brady. Paul says they get pressure on Brady up the middle. Knock him off his spot. We're getting there. Booze, a rush 200 yards. Play defense. Vasily's in the room. No penalties, Ken. That's a good one. They rush the middle. Like it? Run the ball. Keep it out of the hands of Tom Brady. That's where Matt's going. Fly says, Fletcher Cox turns up big. Score more points than they do. Thank you, Ken. Or thank you, Benson. <laughs> Hold them to 17 points, W2. Start quick. It's not something they're known for, is it? Can't give up 10 points like you did to Washington in both those games. I think you're going to come back against the GOAT at home. Two INTs, Travis says. Here's where I'm going. Lot, hey, pretty much, I'm going to condense all the things you guys are saying. Hey, look, man. Challenge him to a fist fight. Challenge him to a fist fight. The Bucs don't want to get in a fist fight. That's not what they want. They don't want to get in a fist fight. They're banged up. Challenge him. How do you challenge somebody to a fist fight? You challenge him right out of the gate. I don't care what we do. I don't care what the success rate is, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what George Foreman did when he fought all of his great opponents. By the way, you guys know we've had George Foreman on this program. You know what George always told me? That's right, Greg. George Foreman always said this to me on winning a fight. 
I wasn't trying to win the round. I was trying to win the fight. It was never important for me to win rounds because I had the ultimate knockout punch. 68 men fell at the hands of George Foreman. The greatest knockout puncher in the history of the division, yes, including Tyson. This guy wasn't knocking out bums. This guy was knocking out Joe Frazier and guys like that and destroying people. Okay, this guy was knocking out Ken Norton, champions. I mean, crushing people in their primes. And he goes, I was never trying to win a round. The Eagles have to have that same mentality. Don't try to win a quarter. Don't try to win a series. Don't lose your patience. Just keep hammering away. You guys should go back and watch Foreman fight Michael Morham. I was there ringside. I showed you my press credential. It's right there. I was there that night. George kept hammering him. Bang, 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 bang. Let me show it to you. Here's my press credential for that night. Bang, 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 bang. I kept going. This guy's hitting him with everything, man. Bang, bang. Sure enough, 10th round came. Dropped him. Knocked him out. I was like, holy shit, George was right. Dude, this is what the Eagles have to do. Keep pounding them. Keep pounding them. Keep running the ball. Dude, if you have pass series where you go three and out, you play right into the Buccaneers' hands. With our soft coverages and the way Gannon plays in the secondary, Brady will have an 86% completion percentage. You watch. Brady will be something like 11 to 12, 130 yards, and you'll do this after the first 10 minutes. Holy shit. Don't lose your school on that. What happens to young coaches, they see that and they go, we got to do something different. No, you don't. Don't do things and don't let the Bucks dictate tempo. You can't let them dictate tempo. The Bucks want to dictate it. Running teams, they dictate tempo. Keep running that fucker, man. Keep drilling them. Oh, Chris Foreman's one of my favorite heavyweights. Ali is my favorite sports person, but Foreman's my favorite heavyweight. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, man. Eagles have to pressure the hell out of Brady. Yeah, move him around back there. How about this? The Eagles have to win time of possession as well. That's right, Rick. Win that time of possession. Win it. Hey, Stevenson, I'm feeling it. I'm going to give you my prediction at the end of the program. I think Brady, I'll tell you what, let's not forget something. Guys, remember, who ended the Belichick-Brady? Dynasty. Do you guys remember? Do you guys remember who ended the Brady and Belichick dynasty? Who ended it? Do you guys remember who ended it? Hey, I like that. 93. Thank you, man. No. The team that ended the dynasty in New England was Derrick Henry and Mike Vrabel. Brady lost to the Titans. At Gillette, his final play was an interception because they ran the ball, they pressured Brady, they moved him around, and that was Brady's last game as a New England Patriot was against the Tennessee Titans. They went into that building and beat the piss out of them up front. 
If I am the Eagles, I get that game film along with the Saints game film, along with the Super Bowl, and I do the same thing, Ryan Tannehill, come on. They ran the ball and they ran him off the field at Gillette. W2, he didn't end it. Came back the next year and won it. Okay? Came back the next year and won another Super Bowl. They won another Super Bowl after they lost. They beat the Rams the next year. TJ Edwards needs to be a ball hawk. I agree, Mart. Has to be. Maniac says 30-27, birds win. You're assuming they put that amount of points up? I, I, I think there's I think both teams. I don't think you can allow the Bucs to get 30. Let's take a look at some of these games. Oh, by the way, I have some draft choices. I've put down my first top five list of NFL draft picks. And I want to tell you who those guys are. What I start to do is, look, I start looking. And see, I look at draft guys, and I go five, then 10, then 15. I get to the first round. Then I look best player available, and I start to rank these guys. And I've got my top five college football prospects to take a look at. Eagles have three picks in the first round coming up in April. We'll look at postseason. I want to hit more on Kelsey making the all-pro team. Guys, please hit the like button. Hour two coming. Tony Bruno's coming up. Keep it right here on the National Football Show. This is Joe Krause of Krause's Coats inviting you to donate a slightly worn coat or jacket and help veterans stay warm this winter. Go to Krause's Coats on Facebook to help those who've served. Have a happy holiday. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. So good, it just disappears. The city of Philadelphia sparkles during the Christmas holiday season with an array of colorful light displays and illuminated Christmas trees donated or installed for free by the talented electricians of IBEW Local 98. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities at IBEW Local 98, visit us at www.ibew98.org. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. As a hardworking American, you've never experienced how tough life can be until now. A catastrophic injury while working on the job. A personal injury from someone else's negligence. Turned away by other law firms in the region who didn't bother to learn your story. It's time to meet the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm and managing partner Brian Fritz. Badly injured? Call the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm. Find out why they say, we got this. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Football 
Tony Bruno, bottom of the hour. It's great to be here on a playoff Friday, right? That's what this is. Football Friday, playoff Friday. No college football, nothing. Get a chance to go out, play 60 minutes of football. One game elimination. Loser goes home. Winner has another shot at the ultimate dream. Winning a Super Bowl, winning a championship. God, man. Great times. Great times for all these teams. I'll give you my prediction at the end of the show. How I see this playing out. Talk a little more about the playoff game itself, Bucks and Eagles, plus the other games. Also, I got my top five draft choices, and I put them in order already. And we'll start adding each week other dudes. I like to take a look at some game film, watch some YouTube on the kid. You know, what was funny about last year's draft was that they kept telling me about Trey Lance. I couldn't find film on him. So people kept asking me, what do you think of Lance? I go, I never saw the kid play. I think I saw him one game against a bunch of nobodies, and I was like, I I can't make an assessment on who I think he is just because he can jump over a hurdle or he can do a shuttle drill or he's fast in a 40. You send that guy to the combines, that's not telling me anything. When Get this, when his workout reel is bigger than his game film reel, wouldn't you have a problem with that? To me, the number one thing that tells me about a football player is the 20-foot rule. All I need to see is 20 feet of film, and I'll tell you if the kid can play or not. I don't need to sit here and watch a guy bench press, run 40-yard dashes. That shit don't mean anything in the league. Hell, Jerry Rice ran a 4-7 at the Combines. Didn't seem to stop him. As a matter of fact, I don't ever remember Jerry Rice being caught from behind. (laughs) Right? So we'll do a little bit of that here. By the way, Jalen's got a lot to play for here. If I were him, man, Alabama situation goes away. What people thought about the second-round pick, Carson Wentz, that that story's pretty much dead now. I think everybody's now starting to write the final chapter of Wentz's day in Philadelphia. I think we're all really now here now. Because you know why? Two teams have come to the same conclusion. You know sometimes when a guy goes someplace and he just blows the, the lid off it, okay, Rasul Douglas, look what he's doing, man. Look what that kid's doing in Green Bay now. He's the reason that defense has gotten better. Okay? He's the reason. He's a ball hawk back there. Okay? So, I mean, sometimes guys go to different places. Sometimes guys, you know, they fit into different organizations better. Okay, it it happens. You may have experienced that yourself, man. May, I may have a same job, but you get to a different place. People understand you, right? Samuel says Green Bay is so loaded. Yeah, but sometimes, my brother, that sphincter muscle gets a little tighter, especially when you're one and three in conference title games like Aaron Rodgers is. To me, what I want to do against Green Bay, I want to get a lead on them. See how they react to pressure. Remember something. That's a third-year head coach. And he's not been very good in conference title games as a coach, nor his staff. Okay? Philiopolis, I think he's saying that Green Bay is loaded because when you look at the rest of the teams in the league, they're probably the most loaded. And I still think they got issues in stopping the run. I do. I I think Green Bay has issues stopping the run. Okay? I do. Illusion. I was always high on Rasul Douglas. Jim Swartz failed to utilize him properly. Illusion, you know what you, you know what Gary Cobb said was is that Jim Swartz's defense was such guardrails on it that it didn't allow his athleticism to roam. He's roaming more in Green Bay. Kind of the same way Diggs 
is roaming in Dallas. They're almost the same kind of player. Okay? By the way, did did Douglas get um, mentions for All-Pro? Tony, appreciate you coming aboard. Did he get mentions for All-Pro? He should. I know Slay got mentions. But here's the one thing about Diggs and Dallas. Do you know, without the turnovers, Diggs is one of the worst corner covers, according to Pro Football Focus, in the league. Okay? One of the worst. Yeah, but you know what, Feast with Pete? You know what, though, man? You got Darius Slay. You're good. You're good. Hey, hey, but, Chris, that's one of the reasons why they allow him to roam there. Let me get to some of these playoff games. Let me ask you guys. He made the Pro Bowl, I, but I was talking all pro. Raiders and Bengals, who you guys got? It's in Cincinnati. Who do you got? Boy, I just think the Raiders are a team of destiny. They're a team of destiny, man. But this Joe Burrow guy has a lot of Brady qualities. 2,000-yard wide receivers. You got a 1,000-yard back in Mixon. They're not bad on defense. O-line needs to improve. I just think the Raiders, man, I don't know. Fifth seed playing a fourth seed. I think you can flip a coin on this one. I see you guys. Jim likes Bengals. Fly likes Bengals. Okay? Flip a coin, Cole, right? Pete says, I got the Raiders. Since he beat them earlier in the season, Raiders on a roll. Actar, that's where kind of I am. Guys, I think I, I, I'm going to go Raiders here. They have overcome so much. And I, then again, Joe Burrow's played in big games. I, I really do. I think this is a coin flip. I think this is going to be a hell of a football game on Saturday. So, me, I'm going to take the Raiders in an upset. By the way, all home teams are favored to win. So I'm taking the Raiders. Patriots at Bills. It's not going to be any snow. But what they're saying is, is it's going to be like one degree. And if there's any kind of win there at Ralph Wilson Stadium or whatever the hell they're calling it now, man, that place gets so cold. I've played up there in the heat and I've played up there in the cold, and it is brutal in both. Bills, Bills, Bills. Bob says Patriots. Patriots are going to win. Here's something that I would say about the Patriots here. Are you really going to give Bill Belichick three shots at a team in the same calendar year with the same group of people? Josh Allen's playing great football right now. He really is. But Belichick, three shots at you? Man, that game's close too. But I think Allen's playing some great football. And to me, the Bills have to run the football. If they cannot run the football, Patriots win this ball game. You got a rookie quarterback here, though. Rookie quarterback in a game like this, man, I got to go Josh Allen here. Chris says two picks. Maniac says, did you hear the Bills are advertising? The fans to pop Viagra before the game to get the blood flowing throughout the body. Legit real story. I like, hey, maybe I should take Viagra before I come on the air. Keep me going. Thank you. I don't know why. Don't ask me. Let's see here. I'm taking bills. I'm on Viagra now. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. Xander says I'll be calling all the people cute. <laughs> I don't think so. Big Seals don't use that. Puppies are cute. Ducklings are cute. Okay. They little kittens are cute. People are not cute. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Dan. Up in the mic stand. <laughs> Excuse me. Is that a tripod that your mic is on? Thank you. I'm here Monday through Friday, four to six. Hey, by the way, try the veal. It's awesome. 
<laughs> Marty says, hey, I'm on Blue Chew. Thank you. <laughs> Did you say Bluetooth? <laughs> Wait a minute. Fee says, Sills, got that Cali humor? The only humor I have is good humor. Okay? And I like sprinkles on it. Thank you. And by the way, nobody on the West Coast knows what good humor is. Yeah, I'm going to get to those. Nobody knows what Carvel and good humor is out here. They don't even... They don't even know what White Castle is. Like, I've got, hey, White Castle on my Twitter page sent me a whole bunch of, like, um, uh, coupons. I got a whole bunch of coupons from White Castle. So I tried checking around out here. Uh, White Castle, what is that? Sounds racist. I'm like, White Castle, you know, you eat 700 of them? You know, when you're drunk as hell at night after you've been out with your boys? Right? They come, like, 12. They got like a dozen eggs. You can eat like 24 of them. Oh, that's what, no, no. A hey, Waffle House is all right. I'm all right with the Waffle House now, homie. Okay. Big Chris says avocado ice cream. Oh, that ain't working for me, brother. Dan, were you drafted by the Bucks? Yes, I was. Love White Castle. I do too, man. Yes, I do. Uh, Denny's too, man. Grand Slam. I'm all over it. By the way, now since I'm over 50, I qualify too. How you doing? They got White Castle grocery stores? Get the hell out of here. Oh, my God. When I was a kid, I could destroy at least 25 of them. Uh, yeah, and, and, hey, not gain a pound. Today, I eat a Tic Tac. I gain 10 pounds. Thank you. Or not. <laughs> Crystal burgers. Ah, man, I'm telling you. Good munchy food. Oh, yeah, you blow about seven dubs, and I could eat probably 50 White Castles. How you doing? Hey. You don't say this when you're eating White Castles. Hey, pass the burger. You go like this. Pass the box. I'll take five boxes. Any professional White Castle dude that goes in and orders will always do this. I'll take four boxes. You don't go like this. Oh, I'll take like, you know, six burgers. You, you, no, 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 guy. You're missing it. Completely missing. It's not how you order. Two blunts, Philly style. Give me a 24 pack. There you go. Maniac. Maniac, you and I must have the same waistline. How you doing? <laughs> oh, Maniac, I could eat 25 of them bitches and not have a problem with it. Woo, man. Wow. Just walk in there all hammered, right? Yeah, give me 24. What are you going to do at 24? I'll be back at 24 minutes. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, and uh, what was that What was that other place, too, you used to go out at night? after Howard? You guys ever go to Howard Johnson's? You guys remember Howard Johnson's? I don't know if they have those anymore. Me and my boys used to go and get the pancakes and everything at night. Three o'clock in the morning after hanging out. Used to go to Hojo's. <laughs> All right, let's get to this other one here. Sunday games. I'll save the Bucks and Eagles. 49ers Cowboys. Man, it's Dak Prescott. Have a lot of pressure on his ass. That whole cowboy team does. You know, I'm actually hearing people go like this. How about this? Look. Hey, man. Dak has no pressure on him. You know? It's the coach. The coach? The coach is a pawn. Who gives a shit about Mike McCarthy? Or some of you call Artie Lang. <laughs> Who cares? Right? I got Jimmy G. I'm with, hey, Kyle, I'm with you, Niners, man. They're bigger. They've been, have they won seven to nine ball games? I think the, I think the 49ers have won seven of their last nine ball games. Am I right when I say that? Dude, they're playing some pretty damn good football right now. And when you watch them against Dallas on Sunday, you're going to go like this. That's a big D line. Their ends, their tackles, that's a big football team. 
Trent Williams is the best tackle in the NFL. No disrespect to Jordan Mulata. Okay? No disrespect to Lane or anybody. I'm just telling you guys. Okay? Trent Williams, the kid who used to be in Washington, is the best fucking offensive lineman in the game right now. He is a highest paid, too. He is a B. Oh, by the way, Parsons is going to get a reality check. I promise you, he's going to get killed in this game. Dude, I'm with you. That Hey, Drew, that kid Samuel, man, I was telling you guys this yesterday. I went like this. I go, I had to look it up. He went to South Carolina. Okay. Hey, Philip, Trent is a massive of man. Yeah, you know who reminds me of? Larry Allen. Okay. He reminds me a lot of very Larry Allen. Eastside Monster, thank you, man. Hey, guys, hit the like button for me, please. Please bang on that for me. It means a lot to us, man. It really does here on this Football Friday. By the way, Tony Bruno is going to be right around the corner with us. Steelers and Chiefs. I like Ben's philosophy. Hey, we have no chance, man. We're going to go into Kansas City, get our asses kicked. Da, 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 da. I, do think Can I do think Kansas City takes care of business here. And I could see them winning by 10. I just don't see how the Steelers are going to generate any offense. I, I, I mean, I think Najee Harris had a nice year. Najee was over 1,100 yards, I think. I think he had a good year. I'm with you, Eagle Empire. I think it's Chiefs all day. And Chiefs by 20, Drew, it could get that high. Watch this. That Monday night game, I'll bury the lead. So when we're on the air on Monday, I'll tell you and I'll keep to it. I think the Cardinals beat the Rams. I think they run the ball. J.J. Watt's going to be activated for this game as well. I don't know what impact that has, but that's going to be cool in the locker room. I don't know if Connor is going to be activated yet. But, boy, I got the, I, I got the Cardinals winning this game. And, the la hey, not this last time, but the time before when the Cardinals ran them off the floor, they were healthier. They're pretty healthy going into this game. I really do. I, I, I like the Cardinals. How about Kyler Murray, too? Not getting any love. That Cardinal team's had a pretty damn good year this year. A little rocky at the end, but they righted the ship in time to get themselves into the postseason. I, I really like the Cardinal team. I think the Rams are overhyped. I think Matthew Stafford I don't trust. I agree with you, Saint. I think they're paper champions. All right. I want to talk to Tony Bruno about Eagle fans. What makes them different than Flyers, Phillies, Sixer fans? Also, Tony had a great relationship with John Madden. I haven't had a chance to talk to him. We'll talk to him about the playoff game on Sunday as well. Also, my five NFL prospects that I have, my top five, we'll do all that. Please hit the like button. Keep it right here on the National Football Show. This is Joe Krause of Krause's Coats inviting you to donate a slightly worn coat or jacket and help veterans stay warm this winter. Go to Krause's Coats on Facebook to help those who've served. Have a happy holiday. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. So good, it just disappears. The city of Philadelphia sparkles during the Christmas holiday season with an array of colorful light displays and illuminated Christmas trees donated or installed for free by the talented electricians of IBEW Local 98. To learn more about who we are, 
what we do, and career opportunities at IBEW Local 98, visit us at www.ibew98.org. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. As a hardworking American, you've never experienced how tough life can be until now. A catastrophic injury while working on the job. A personal injury from someone else's negligence. Turned away by other law firms in the region who didn't bother to learn your story. It's time to meet the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm and managing partner Brian Fritz. Badly injured? Call the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm. Find out why they say, we got this. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Football show Dan Julio. Tony Bruno will join us in a couple of minutes. A legendary sportscaster from Philadelphia, WIP, fanatic, the whole nine yards, you know, right here too with Jacob. One of the great sportscasters in the history of Philadelphia sports will join us here in a couple minutes. You know, I hit the like button, guys. Um, I told you what the Eagles had to do against the Bucks. Well, let me tell you how. It goes south if the Bucks do this to the Eagles on Sunday. If the Buccaneers get a lead and we're seeing 75% completion percentage and Brady's not being threatened, this thing will be a, a runaway. Okay? Because I don't think the Eagles have the capability of a comeback. I just don't think they have comeback capability. You've got to have a couple turnovers in this ball game as well, pressuring him. Brady doesn't turn the football over here. Now, what's going to limit Brady is going to be the injuries to the wideout position. So what's the one thing that they're going to try to do right out of the gate? Brady's going to try to create a running game with intermediate passing. And if we're not jamming these guys at the line of scrimmage, in my opinion, that's how Brady gets offense going. and. When you don't have an effective running game, you create one. How many times do you guys remember Brady in New England creating a running attack by just those intermediate slot passes? Three yards, four yards, five yards. They weren't really dunk passes. They were designed four-yard passes. It was to create a running game, which actually then in turn got the running game going. Because it's it's not like the dink and dunk. See, the uneducated football guy will look at the Brady offense and go, it's a dink and dunk offense. It's not. It's by design to create a running attack. How many times do you see somebody in the slot, a wideout, he'll get a quick hitch, gain three yards? That's by design. They're not looking to break away and create 15, 20-yard gains. They're looking to get the run game going. They're kind of baiting you and trying to spread you out so that that could create a running game inside the tackle guard center spot. All of these things that Brady's offense does, again, remember what I told you yesterday. They're all false reads. The offense that Tom Brady runs, he basically tries to do this. We're trying to throw the football deep. That's not really what he's doing. They show that. But in turn, they're trying to create a running attack. Slot pass, tight end, back, over the top, just to keep you honest. That over the top deep passing, no risk it, no biscuit, 
Brady had to convince Arians that's not how we're going to win here. And Arians had to pull that back. No risk it, no biscuit. That's not Tom Brady football. That's not New England Patriot football. They don't risk anything. There's a rule in New England that says that if you get near the goal line, you can't reach for the goal line or you'll be fined. Everybody knows that that's where turnovers most likely happen is near the goal line. So you're not allowed to do that there. They limit mistakes. How many times do you hear great coaches saying this? It's not about the great plays you make. It's limiting the awful mistakes, the pick sixes, sack fumble, return. Those are the nightmare ones that break a team's back. You're like, oh, God. You want to break a team's back? Sack, strip, fumble, pick it up and take it in. That's a killer. Jalen is also going to have to be very protective of that football. Okay? You can't be dancing around out there. You have got to be careful because the Buccaneers are knowing this and they're going to do everything they can to um, dislodge that football because they know he can be a little bit, I don't want to say reckless, loose with the football. Coach, in the last couple games, three or two of the last three ball games, how many times has Sirianni said and gone over to Jalen and said, dude, you got to protect the football a little bit better than this. Okay? Can't have that. Rick says, got to stop Leonard Fournette. Absolutely. Charles says, put a bounty on Brady. Screw the flag. Just hit him, right? <laughs> yeah, part of me back in the day would like that. Pete says, it's going to be raining on Friday night. Pete, the Bucs practice and play in that. Okay? Brady's played in every condition possible. Sleet, snow, rainstorms. Nothing's going to phase that guy. Okay? Okay, Pete, Sunday, the Bucks practice in the rain. Trust me. Boozer says we need the defense to show up. That's an understatement. You've got to get at least six, five, five to six three and outs in this game on Sunday, in my opinion. Got to be at least five to six three. Got to be at least that. Got to be at least that, man. When it comes to three and outs. On the Buccaneer side. Rain helps us with the run game. It does. But remember, like I said, we're talking about a quarterback that has seen it, done it, has been in all of it. Russ says Brady versus Rogers championship game at Lambeau. That's what they're saying. That's a good one, Rick. How many turnovers do you think the Eagles need in this ball game to pull it out? Kyle says, you think Sanders' hand is 100%? Kyler, I wouldn't think it is, but according to him and what he's saying, um, he's saying that um, it is, without a doubt, uh, ready to rock. Hey, uh, Xander, uh, Tony doesn't have the link yet. If you could send it to him, please, I appreciate it. Okay? He just texted me. Okay? He just texted me, so he's going to call Tony Bruno right now, so we'll see what we're doing here. Let's see here. Eagles need to win the turnover battle, plus two. Hey, Drew, there's no question you guys, and I believe it too, these guys have to get the turnover battle. They have to win that. Hey. Penalties, too, have to be a factor here, too. Eagles can't have, like, a shitload of pre-snap penalties in this game. You've got to know exactly what you're doing here. Okay? No, 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 Chris. That's not really Xander. That could just be a mix-up on the other end. It's all good. Okay? We will keep I'm, – I'm, I'm assuming there will be a pregame show smile for Jacob. Okay? I, I would I would imagine that there's going to be probably a pregame here that will have that for you here. <clears throat> Old Cole says, hope there's no delays. 
Run the ball. VJ, no question about it. Eagles need to be focused on no mistakes. Dude, fastest way you end drives is those pre-snap penalties, man. It drives every coach nuts. All right, guys, please hit the like button. I've been looking forward to this all week. And by the way, yesterday we had the great David Hill on from Fox Sports, the creator of Fox Sports, and I go, I'm getting Tony Bruno on Friday. And he goes, Dan, ask Tony Bruno about his relationship with John Madden. And I'm like this. I go, no, 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 no. I know the relationship. Those two had bocce ball tournaments together. Tony was loved and still is in San Francisco. He's loved there and in Tampa, I would imagine, too, because I know he did work in both markets. But we welcome in the great Tony Bruno. And those pictures you were posting, Tony, with you and John Madden when you were out there at North Beach, and all the things that you guys did. I thought some of those pictures were some of the best. It just must have brought some really great memories back. I know it was a tough time for all of his friends, but that was a great time when you guys were hooking up with KMBR and all the things you did in the Bay Area. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And John, my kids with John Madden back in 1984 at the Summer Olympics in Los Angeles, where they were only seven and four, and now they're both in their 40s. So that's that's how long it goes back with John Madden. And, I, and Steve Mariucci, did a nice job too, which I didn't know he was going to do on NFL game day morning uh, when he did a, a tribute to John Madden last week, or was it two weeks ago? I've lost track now. And he actually showed video of the bocce tournaments when Madden and I were working together and playing bocce. So, you know, and David Hill, obviously another great influence to me, you know, to, to be, to be working for Fox being one of the first voices on the air there and to have him promote me and say, Hey, we need to get you on, on the best damn sports show. So, a lot of great people helped me along the way, and that's how we all do it. You know, you meet people, good people, you develop a relationship with them, and a lot of times they help you. And John Madden helped me professionally and personally, and, and so did David Hill at Fox. Absolutely, Tony. You were the mainstay at our network when we first started that thing, and uh, I believe his name was George Greenberg. He used to come down, and those guys used to do all the things with you. David Hill was a massive fan of yours, and it really propelled – that radio network to where it is now where there are over 400 affiliates. So let me bring you into Philadelphia here, T. Um, you know, I used to cover the Eagles from 30,000 feet. Now we're doing it <laughs> like this, Tony. Tony, we're getting like 40,000 people watching the show now. And people now, because I'm, I'm, I'm like looking in the eyes of the Eagle fans now, they don't like bullshit artists. <laughs> they don't like people that are phonies. Just tell them, hey, Self-deprecation can be cool here, but what separates the Eagle fan from Sixer fan, Flyer fan, and Philly fan? Why is it so passionate for that football team? Because I think of all the sports teams in, in the city of Philadelphia, I think the Eagles have the longest suffering fan base, which they finally got the Super Bowl a few years ago back in Minnesota. So I think it started with grandparents and then passes down to their, to their grandchildren then down to their sons and daughters and great-grandchildren. So it's something that the entire city revolves around. And the other thing, I think, because the NFL, you know, is one game a week. There's only 16, now 17 games. It's something that builds all year long between the draft, you know, and the training camps. So football is 24-7, 365, and it's always been that way in Philly when it comes to what's the team that more people follow. And it's obviously – the Eagles win or lose. Now the 76ers are good. So the fan base is there is excited again. You know, the Flyers, they have a constant fan base and the Phillies, you know, again, up and down, but you know, they have 162 games, 81 home games. So there's a lot of opportunities to see them. So that's why I think football, at least NFL football, because Philly's an NFL town. There's a couple of college teams, but there's not a lot of college traction for college sports, except college basketball, where there's some great programs, but the college football in Philly, doesn't rank. And it's that way in a lot of big cities, you know, the big cities more normally pro oriented. And then the smaller towns, the college towns, obviously college football is King and number one. Tone, when, when, when you look at guys like Ben Simmons and then you turn around and you look at Jason Kelsey, I mean, the mummer's gear. And then you see the standoffish behavior of Ben Simmons. Is it really the staple of this, of, of this city here that, Hey man, all they ask you to do is take the take the snow off the driveway, get off your asses, go to work, do what's expected. Don't I'm not gonna thank you for like for I'm not gonna thank a fish for swimming. Just go do your freaking job, dude. 
And when you see a guy that's entitled like Simmons and such like that become a poster child, I think for today's NBA guy, but Tony, is that why guys like Kelsey are more revered than guys like that? Because they love the environment that they play in. Hell, even, even the kid, Zach Ertz, he wears a Philly brand, uh, you know, a bracelet around his wrist and he's playing out in Arizona now because he loved living in the city. Is that why Philly fans attract themselves to certain people? Like maybe I, they look at Lindros and they go, that guy was never a Philly dude. Bobby Clark was. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, you know, it's a, it's a blue collar town and it always will be because the people who fill the stands, you know, the people who fill the luxury suites are the white collar guys who make a lot of money and God bless them. The people who fill the seats are the blue collar people who work hard every day, go to, you know, go home and they want sports to be their outlet from the politics and all the other noise. And guys like Jason Kelsey is a, you know, he's a, he's a brown bag, bring the lunchbox kind of guy. And then you win a Super Bowl and you play every single week. You know, you can't help but love it. So Philly, you know, the whole Rocky thing, they love guys who overachieve because Jason Kelsey, let's be honest, when he was drafted out of Cincinnati, his brother was the tight end. His brother was drafted afterwards, but both guys were great players at Cincinnati. And Andy Reid drafted each one of them. Andy Reid drafted, drafted Jason Kelsey, and then he he drafted his brother when he went to the, to the Kansas City Chiefs. So he knew the pedigree of the Kelsey family. And those guys, Ben Simmons, you know, they loved the guy when he was drafted first overall. They thought, okay, now they have another piece with the whole process. And Ben Simmons played well, and the fans loved him. But once he once the playoffs last year, when he failed to go to the basket, and then moped about it, and then went into this shell where he's gone out to California every week and not paying attention to the teams, and then said he didn't want to be there anymore. When you don't want to be there, the fans don't want you to be there either. When you're making that kind of money, and again, the fans don't care about 30, 40, 50 million. Those numbers don't mean anything to the regular fans. So they don't sit there and say, well, he makes, well, they do say that because that's what talk radio talk. Well, he makes how much? How much is that hit against the cap? Those are the real diehards who study that stuff. The average fan doesn't know or care. They want to see guys. That's why they, they actually love guys who don't who they know don't make any money and go out there and bust their asses every night. And they're the guys who perform, and those are the guys who are the heroes that fans love and gravitate towards, the guys who run into the outfield wall. Those players, the stars, if you're a star and you're making a lot of money, and even even uh, you know, even even the baseball players in Philly, they're making a lot of money. If they go out there and bust their asses, they're not going to hear. The fans booing them. They may hear if you go into a long streak. That's normal everywhere in tough cities like Philly, Boston, New York. But when it, you know when when guys go out there and bust it, and they're making a lot of money, and the fans can see that those guys love being there and love playing the game, they get cut a lot of slack. So that 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 brings me to a point here. Then with a guy like Bryce Harper, I don't really think that the Philly fans give a crap about the guy winning an MVP. They care about him winning a World Series. Do you agree that Absolutely. that's more of an individual? I mean, and that kind of, again, represents a little bit. And I don't want to sound like, oh, man, get off my lawn, dude. But, I mean, this is more of a team sports city. Don't you agree that more of an individual where you're rooting for one dude? Absolutely. But, obviously, you know, Bryce Harper is the face of the franchise. And I give the guy credit because he wasn't out there campaigning to be MVP of the league. In fact, most of the season, people weren't talking about him. But while his team continued to struggle, you know, he, he's the kind of guy that can carry a team. So you look at his numbers this year, and he put up great numbers, and it wasn't until probably August or September that people nationally started paying attention to Bryce Harper and the season he was having. So when he got into the MVP conversation, you know, a lot of Philly fans were like, yeah, we're not going to make the playoffs, but I think fans like that. They like it as a, a badge of honor. You know, we go out there and watch this team. They're supposed to be good. You know, Harper hasn't won a World Series since he's gotten here. He won one in Washington. But he loves Philly. He loves the fans. The fans love him. And I think when he won, is it a consolation prize to the fans? No, because it's just like Joel Embiid. You know, people want Joel Embiid to be the MVP of the NBA. And that's all good and done. But when you're Joel Embiid or you're Bryce Harper, MVPs of the league don't really mean that much, especially if you've been around for, you know, if you're a second-year player and you're in the MVP conversation, that's phenomenal. But when you've been around three, four, five, six years, 10 years, you know, you're expected to win championships. But I think Bryce Harper is not a problem on the Phillies. His personality is not a problem. You know, he gets along with everybody. The fans love him. His teammates love him. So Bryce Harper is one of those superstars that if he gets a little help around him and some pitching help, I think the fans, you know, will always remember him as one of the great players in their history when all is said and done. 
Two last questions for you, Tony. Buccaneers and Eagles on Sunday. You think they have a puncher's chance going in, and I say puncher's chance because they're the number one running attack in the NFL. You think they have a shot? Looks like it's going to be some bad weather at Raymond James. Uh, fans should be absolutely off the hook. You know that fan base as well as any other fan base around the country. How do you think this thing plays out on Sunday? Well, the Eagles are justifiably eight-point underdogs. I think it started at nine and a half, so there's it some did. Philly money going in. And you're right about puncher's chance because, you know, they're getting Miles Sanders back, and he's been three weeks removed. But you see the Eagles, they're deep at running back, and they can plug guys in. So Miles Sanders is their stud. But you got you looked at them in the last couple of games without Miles Sanders. Boston Scott's running out there. Jordan Howard. You know, everybody, anybody they put in there, the kid from Memphis that they drafted, the rookie running back, he's in there. He's making play. So I think it's it's one of those things that the offensive line loves to run block and they feed off this. As you know, Dan, when you're defensive lineman, you know, you can feel the offensive line surging. And most offensive linemen love to run block. And they don't like the pass block. Pass blocking is a lot harder, and it's a different technique. But the Eagles' offensive line, they are bulldogs, man. And, and they had a dis disaster last year with their offensive line. And this year it's developed into one of the best again in the NFL, credit to, you know, to, the, to the coaches. But the bottom line is the Eagles can run the football. Jalen Hurts can buy time. He still has a lot of problems in his game, but he's a rookie, and he's going in his first playoff start against Tom Brady, who's in his 46th playoff start. Unbelievable. In fact, Jalen Hurts was three years old when Tom Brady started his first postseason game in 2001. So how old does that make us now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on, dude. Right on. Tone, I have, to, I have to ask you this one here. So this dude in Chicago, Hub Arkosh, comes out and says, look, I think that Aaron Rodgers is an asshole. I'm not voting for him. We all know this. That's code for this. He's not vaccinated. I'm not voting for the guy. How, I, I think the media is trying to come up with every single way possible not to give this award to Aaron Rodgers. The guy made a choice. He's made a decision. And it just seems now, here we are like the Baseball Hall of Fame voters, Tone. They're trying to make their vote mean something by keeping Bonds and Clemens out when it just makes them look ridiculous when you look at the year. This guy had four interceptions, four turnovers, Tony, four turnovers, and he's the number one seed, beat Joe Burrow in Cincy in overtime. Do you really think that the people are going to hold that he's not vaccinated against him and trying to win the MVP? Absolutely not, because I think when the last time we talked, we were talking about his, a lot of his teammates had COVID. And they sat out games, and he went out there and played. So just because he did, he said he was he didn't come clean initially, he still went out there and performed every week. He had the entire world, all the woke media, print journalists, writers, broadcasters, all sanctimonious, calling this guy a, a bad guy. And he went through last year with the offseason stuff. He showed up and he played, and he played better than any quarterback. I mean, Tom Brady's up there too. But when you talk about it, Tom Brady wasn't under the pressure that Aaron Rodgers was coming off a season about, I don't know if I'm going to show up. He was pissed off about the Jordan Love drafting. The bottom line is he shows up and he plays, and he plays at a level that you don't really, you rarely see. So he's he's not only he's not only the MVP of the league, and I don't think one vote Hub Arkish is going to keep him out from the MVP, but I don't even think Aaron Rodgers gives a crap if he's the MVP or not at this juncture. He wants to win a Super Bowl. You know, and then this is this is his chance. He's the number one seed. They got to beat the teams at home. Everybody's got to go through Green Bay, but they got to get that monkey off their back of winning the first game at home in cold weather, which they excel at. And so to me, does it matter if one guy wants to play God and not vote for him for the MVP? No, it makes him look like an idiot. There'll be a lot of media people who will agree with him, but it doesn't matter. Those people don't matter. They don't matter in the grand scheme of things. Just like what we say doesn't really matter. We just give opinions. But I don't I don't judge people based on their off the field or what they do in their private life, unless they're murderers or rapists. You know, if the guy didn't want to get vaccinated, and a lot of people didn't get vaccinated, and now even the vaccinated people like I am with two vaccines, I've gotten COVID twice. So I'm tired of people trying to put people in compartments and say the vaccinated people, they're the best. The unvaccinated shouldn't even be allowed to go to a hospital if they have a heart attack. That's the kind of nonsense bullshit that has caused this country to go crazy. You know what? We're all human beings. People make their decisions. They don't want to get vaccinated. I'm not going to treat them like they're a leper. You know, vaccinated people are passing on COVID. 
So stop with the bullshit. Stop telling people what to do with their lives. Okay? They want to take a chance? That's their chance. So I don't tell people not to get vaccinated. I don't tell people to get vaccinated. It's your body, your choice. Or it's my body, my choice. Whatever you want to make it. You know what I'm saying? Tony, <laughs> where 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 can people get more of this? Please tell people where they could get more of this because I've got to tune this in now. And I, as I tell you guys, there's only one guy better than me in broadcasting. And here he is right here. The rest of them all blow out loud. This guy's the best right here. Where can they get it, Tony? No Filter Network. It's You got to go into at nofilter.net. And then, it's the, unfortunately, right now, they don't have an app where you can go into it. So you go in and you you can subscribe, but you you have to go in and set up a profile. Then you can be a part of the show at nofilter.net. And we go on Friday nights. In fact, tonight, 7 o'clock till about 9. We go as long as we want. We don't stop it down. We have people in a chat room who talk to us all the time. And then they can punch up a little button. And then they can appear on the show. So they can be a part of the show. Talk about interactive. Everybody has fun. We have some cocktails. You know, we don't have to worry about the FCC. Somebody curses. We don't have writers trying to get us thrown off the air. You know, it's the real world, which unfortunately most broadcasting is still it's still a foreign entity to them. It's more so than ever. People can't do their jobs that they're paid to do because they're afraid that somebody's going to call them out for saying something that some one idiot deemed to be offensive or racist. And that's the hardest thing to overcome. So I know what I am, and I know in 50 years of spoken word, unscripted radio and television, I've made a couple of blips, and I'm, I'm a bad guy for that. So the people who know me know my character and know what I'm all about. That's how I care about. I don't care about, you know, bitter guys at Deadspin, you know, who can't get a real job and then just write a column. And it's always, you know, race. It's always the race card. It's always it's the easiest card to play. And these are white guys playing the race card. So when you're a white guy playing the race card against another white guy, that means you have white guilt. So these are the people who are white, guilty about their whiteness, trying to bring down other people who don't care about the color of anybody's skin in the job that we do. Hey, hey, Tone, hey Tone, listen to this. So Danny Stubbs goes like this. He goes, man, you know, you never see a brother knocking a statue down. All you white guys are knocking them statues down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hey, Tom, thank you so much, brother, man. I'm so happy. You, you look great, too, by the way, man. You look so much healthier, man. I'm glad that you're getting a chance to spend time with your kid. I'm glad you spend time with us, man, and it's always wonderful when you do it. Thank you so much, brother. Have a great weekend. Go Birds. I hope they get it done against the Buccaneers. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Dan. Have a great one, man. You got it, man. The great Tony Bruno with us. I got to take a time out because I, 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 I can't miss my break here. Guys, do me a favor. By the way, I saw what you said, Eric. Sills, you suck. <laughs> That's great, man. Hit the like button. Keep it right here on the National Football Show. This is Joe Krause of Krause's Coats inviting you to donate a slightly worn coat or jacket and help veterans stay warm this winter. Go to Krause's Coats on Facebook to help those who've served. Have a happy holiday. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. So good, it just disappears. The city of Philadelphia sparkles during the Christmas holiday season with an array of colorful light displays and illuminated Christmas trees donated or installed for free by the talented electricians of IBEW Local 98. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities at IBEW Local 98, 
visit us at www.ibew98.org. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. As a hardworking American, you've never experienced how tough life can be until now. A catastrophic injury while working on the job. A personal injury from someone else's negligence. Turned away by other law firms in the region who didn't bother to learn your story. It's time to meet the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm and managing partner Brian Fritz. Badly injured? Call the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm. Find out why they say, we got this. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Back, National Football Show. By the way, I told you when somebody says Big Sill sucks, it's a goof. Because remember, no gratuitous backslapping in Philadelphia. Nobody does this. Hey, how did I do, guys? <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you. What do you want? You want you you want your ass kissed? Oh, what do you think this is? Okay, huh? Oh. I don't know why I dropped an O in there. Maybe it's because my last name's got a vowel on it. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Oh, I love Tony Bruno. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> yeah, you shit the uh, I shit the bed. Is that what you're trying to say? Oh man, Dave. We'll see what happens, man. Grab the cannolis. Leave the mask. Hey, oh, Eagles 27-24. They control tempo. They turn Brady over three times. They use a lot of the same schemes that Dennis Allen of the Saints used against Brady. They run the ball effectively. Eagles run the ball for 175 yards. They pull the upset in Tampa. Then the decision will be whether or not Brady plays one more year. And they end it in Tampa. Last postseason game that Brady played was in that same stadium. I think the Eagles end it. Chris says 28-22, birds. No cue, got it. Thank you, Hugh. (laughs) Oh, damn it. We'll do that Monday on the top five prospects. I'll make sure I keep that, okay? How to get my boy on. Sorry, guys. Goat. Bucks. 24-17. Ken. Brady will not stop that way. Greg, is there really ever a great ending for Tom Brady? Birds, 22. Bucks, 17. Phil, 34-24. East side, 34-27, Birds. Vaselli, 17-14, Birds. Can you suck? (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Chris says, 41-33, Birds. Wow. You think that Jalen Hurts offense is going to put up 41 points? That's a lot. Great show, Dan. Thank you, guys. You guys make it, man. You guys make it. Jalen, okay, Kyler. Now I know you're a Buck fan. Victory Monday. Holy cow. That city will explode. And not only the fact that you beat Brady twice, like in crucial games, the Super Bowl, and then you knocked him out. 
Holy shit, that would be unbelievable. Gary Cobb will join us on Monday. We had a spectacular week. You guys were freaking amazing. We had some gigantic names on this week, and you guys were all awesome. Please, guys, do me a favor. Hit the like button. If you missed any of the show, if you missed a Bruno interview, go back and watch it a little bit later. I know there'll be a pregame show for the Eagles and Bucks. Don't forget the postgame show, too. We'll be back with you on Monday going 4-6. to six. Have a spectacular weekend. Go Birds. See you on the flip side.